In this video, we're going to continue our study of the alternating series, but we're going to focus instead at looking at the sum of an alternating series that converges and the error involved in finding that sum. Again, I'll encourage you to continue to keep track of what we've learned, all of the tests that we know, so that it's easy to look back on because this can get a little heavy with all of the different tests that we know, and it's helpful to have them all in one place. Obviously, we can only use the alternating series remainder theorem if we have an alternating series and that series converges. So the first thing that we're going to do in any of these questions is to do exactly what we did in our last video. We have to ensure that it's an alternating series that converges, and to do that, we have to check these conditions. First, that the limit approaches zero, and that essentially the series is decreasing. Each subsequent term is less than the term before it. Once we've done that, we're going to use some partial sum. So this is going to be some value. It's going to say use the first four terms or the first six terms or the first 10 terms to estimate the sum. And essentially what we're going to do, let's say it's four terms, S sub four would be taking the first value a sub one plus a sub two plus a sub three plus a sub four. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to use the specified number of terms given in the question. And obviously this is not going to be the real sum because we're just taking a partial sum. We're taking just a few terms and adding them together. And the more terms we add, the closer we'll get to the actual sum, which is S. So the remainder is what happens when I take the real sum and subtract my partial sum. Now the trick here is we don't know the real sum, but what we're going to do is we're going to estimate it based on our partial sum. And so what the theorem tells us is that the absolute value of the remainder is less than or equal to the first neglected term the absolute value of the remainder is less than or equal to the first neglected term. So let's say I was using the partial sum with the first four terms. So this would say that S minus S4 is equal to the absolute value of R4, and that has to be less than or equal to the first thing that I didn't use. So I used A1, A2, A3, and A4, so this would be A5. Again, this will make a lot more sense once we do it, but I wanted to give you an idea of where we're headed here. Let's take a look at our first example together. What we want to do is we want to approximate the sum of the series using the first six terms. But before I get into the first six terms, I have to do everything that I've already learned how to do in my last video, which is first to determine that a sub n is everything that doesn't include that alternating piece. So that's four over the natural log of n plus one. And then I have to check for convergence. So a is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of four over the natural log of n plus one. So as n increases without bound, I'm taking the natural log of an increasingly large number, and the natural log of an increasingly large number is increasingly large. And if I take a number divided by an increasingly large number, I get an increasingly small number that approaches zero. So A, check, check. B, I have to then determine if A sub n plus one, or four over, the natural log of n plus one plus one, also known as n plus two, is that, how does that compare to four over the natural log of n plus one? Well, I know that as this value increases, as we just talked about, the denominator will increase and the entire fraction will decrease, so it makes sense that this would always be true. It will always be true that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. So my first conditions are met. Step two is to compute the partial sum, and that is where we're asked to use the first six terms of the sequence. 
Now I've done this ahead of time just for the sake of time because I didn't want you to have to watch me write out the entire partial sum, but let's talk about it so that I didn't just magically make it show up. So if I'm looking at S6, that's asking me to take the partial sum of the first six terms of the entire sequence. So I am going to be using that alternating negative one as well. So negative one to the second power because one plus, remember this is n plus one, so one plus one is two, and then natural log of one plus one, which is two. And I continued that for three, four, five, six, seven. So that is the first six terms. Even though I'm here at seven, remember that's because it was six plus one and six plus one. Then I just did a little bit of simplification because negative one squared is positive one and negative one cubed is negative one, which is why I just made it a minus. And then that's positive and then that's negative and then that's positive and then that's negative. So that's where that alternating sign comes from. And then I used my calculator to compute that value. From here, I'm now going to look at the alternating series remainder theorem. And here's what that remainder theorem says. That says that if I take S, S is the actual sum, and I don't know the actual sum. So it says that the actual sum minus S sub six, which is 2.7067, has to be less than or equal to the first term that I didn't use. So this was the sixth term, I'm talking about the seventh term, the first one that I did not use. So a sub seven is four over the natural log of seven plus one, which I can approximate with my calculator to be 1.9236. So that's what I have here, 1.9236. The alternating series remainder theorem says that this inequality is true. So now I just have to break out my algebra skills and say, okay, well, this is an absolute value inequality. And if it's an absolute value inequality that is less than, which is always going to be the case for this alternating series remainder theorem, I can rewrite this as negative 1.9236 is less than or equal to S minus 2.7067 is less than or equal to positive 1.9236 because it's a less than inequality and therefore I can write it as a compound inequality in this way. Of course, from here, I can just add 2.7067 everywhere because I want the middle value to just be S. And so that leaves me with the result of 0.7831 is less than or equal to S, is less than or equal to 4.6303. The question at the beginning said approximate the sum, and that is what I have done. So based on the information that I have gathered, I know that the true sum is going to be between 0.7831 and 4.6303. Obviously, I have found a little bit of information for the partial sum, and that does fall between those two values. Another application of the alternating series remainder theorem has to do specifically with this portion. And that is if we're asked to find the number of terms we would need to approximate the sum within a certain error. So the alternating series remainder theorem tells us that R sub n is less than or equal to A sub n plus one. And in this case, remember that the A does not include the negative one value. So A sub n is one over n squared, which means in this particular question, A sub n plus one is one over n plus one squared, because I'm replacing n with n plus one. I need that value to be less than 0 0.001, 0 0.001. 
this is what I'm going to solve. So from here, the good news is it's just algebra. I'm going to take each side and multiply it by n plus 1 quantity squared. And on the left-hand side, that gives me 1 is less than 0 0.001 times n plus 1 quantity squared. I'll divide each side by 1 10 thousandth, um, and that would give me 10,000. I'm sorry, 1 1 thousandth, and that would give me 1,000. I would take the square root of each side, and of course, at this point, it's going to be a little bit less precise. 31.62277 is less than or equal to n plus 1, and therefore 30.627622 is less than n. So what does this tell me? That n has to be greater, so if you want to rewrite it in the correct order, n has to be greater than 30.62277. And obviously, I can only use whole number answers. So the first value that is greater than 30.662277 is that I need at least 31 terms. So I need at least 31 terms. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at absolute and conditional convergence.